Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm here to talk about uh, Apache Stratos, which is an Apache project, uh, which is a platform as a service uh, uh, framework. Uh, I am from WSO2. WSO2 is an open source middleware company. We work very closely with um, uh, Apache on multiple projects. Um, however, I'm not going to talk about uh, WSO2 today. I'm predominantly going to talk about um, Apache Stratos. So as I mentioned, um, Apache Stratos is an incubating project. Uh, initially, Stratos was developed by WSO2, but about an year ago, WSO2 donated this uh, to Apache, and it has been, uh, this project has been evolving under Apache community for the last year or so, and um, it has gone under major re-architecture, et cetera, with, uh, the, within the Apache community. Um, and it is basically a platform as a service, framework uh, by the Apache community, and it is capable of um, uh, elastically scaling any service type on top of uh, theoretically any infrastructure as a service. That's the idea. So you plug in whatever the infrastructure service that you have, use Apache Stratos, and bring in services to be automatically scaled. So when I say services here, uh, we mean uh, things such as uh, uh, application frameworks, application servers, programming language frameworks, programming languages, databases, etc. Um, so because it is a framework, uh, when you have uh, some service brought in, you have automatic managing, uh, management of logging and metering uh, services provided for the uh, services that you bring in. And also, it also have some uh, foundation uh, services such as user management, storage, uh, billing, which is expected out of a pass so that you can easily, uh, uh, in a unified manner, uh, ma uh, manage these across the services that you bring into the platform as a service. <clears throat> so this is the overall architecture of Apache Stratos. I will go into the more uh, important sections, uh, section by section, and explain how it does. So at the bottom most, you have the infrastructure as a service. You can have uh, any infrastructure as a service uh, cloud that you have. For example, OpenStack, vCloud, uh, CloudStack, EC2, et cetera. And uh, we integrate uh, the infrastructure as a service uh, using jclouds API uh, into the platform as a service. And then platform as a service has various components. Predominantly, it can have multiple services. For example, databases, application servers, et cetera. And each service can have its own load balancer and be load balanced. Uh, one of the key aspects of this infra uh, architecture is the fact that all components are connected using a message bus. So it brings in the decoupling between the components uh, that you have and uh, has loose coupling so that uh, you can easily uh, manage this architecture, bring in new uh, uh, IaaS layers, bring in new services, et cetera. So uh, on the left-hand side of the architecture, we had the Stratos controller. Basically, you have the provision to manage artifact distribution into various services that you have. Uh, it has the auto-scaler, which is rule-based, which manipulates the coordination between the load balancers and the service nodes. Uh, you have the cloud controller, uh, and you have a, a complex event processing engine. And as I said, these are all connected into a uh, unified message bus. So uh, uh, the cloud controller is responsible for controlling the uh, infrastructure as a service resources via the jclouds API. Uh, and uh, it, it, it deals with spawning new instances on top of the infrastructure service cloud. Then you have a service. Service is a composition of a set of one or more load balancers and one or more service nodes. Uh, and uh, basically, the load balancers balance the uh, load across the service nodes and uh, informs the auto scaler in terms of the uh, current load that you have in order to scale up or down based on the load, the service nodes that are uh, doing the real work. Then uh, every service node has an agent inside there, uh, this one. All these uh, agents publish uh, information 
uh, as uh, events into a real-time event bus so that it helps you to keep monitoring the uh, status of the uh, service nodes. And uh, the event bus is in turn connected to a complex event processing engine so that it is capable of picking up interesting streams uh, in terms of what is happening. So basically, this particular uh, event bus based architecture brings in the situational awareness of the cloud. You can keep track of what is going on with your cloud um, uh, using this particular um, uh, technique. And the complex event processing engine uh, filters these events and informs the message bus what the situation uh, is all about. And uh, if you want, you can plug in external uh, business activity monitor engines, etc., in order to uh, extract these events and do further processing uh, into a third-party system if you want. Then it also has the foundation services, right? For example, you, have, you need to have user management. Uh, billing is an important aspect when you are dealing with uh, uh, infrastructure service allocations, et cetera. And then common storage uh, services, et cetera. So these are provided into, to all services as foundation services so that you can leverage the, um, these uh, across services in a unified manner. So putting them all back together, uh, the, the architecture has the message bus, the event bus, the services plugged in, and common services uh, being provided uh, in terms of getting the job uh, done holistically. So the advantage of this architecture is, uh, first and foremost, the event bus model gives you the unified communication across the components in the pl pa uh, platform as a service. Also, the, 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 the no, sorry, rather the event bus, the message bus. Then you also have the uh, event bus to monitor the um, um, situational awareness, uh, uh, the, the ca capacity aspects, et cetera, uh, in terms of the cloud. And we have centralized uh, monitoring and metering uh, in the cloud. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, by architecture, it is uh, such that you can plug in new uh, infrastructure as a service layers into this one. And it also has a cartridge model. Cartridges are those um, uh, types of services that you have in the system uh, where you uh, scale out, up and down as um, uh, service nodes, as I explained earlier. So uh, uh, this, uh, this is the cartridge concept. So you can have frameworks, application servers, various programming language uh, platforms, databases, or anything. Uh, if you have legacy applications, et cetera, you can bring them in into the uh, platform as service nodes. And service nodes ben benefit from the common infrastructure services and uh, foundation services that you have. And the uh, other important aspect of this uh, Stratos architecture is that it is not only about the web traffic. It is not only HTTP that you can scale uh, using uh, this architecture. It is also capable of uh, scaling non-HTTP traffic. For, for example, you can uh, scale up and down thrift uh, given this uh, particular architecture. <coughs> So we have uh, logging, uh, metering, and monitoring in the system. Uh, basically, you can track instance uh, up and down times uh, and uh, uh, the health status of the uh, system. And you can keep monitoring the application logs when applications are deployed into the uh, system using the common infrastructure. And uh, basically, uh, in simple terms, it makes uh, it helps you to uh, deal with uh, throttling uh, and also makes the DevOps life easy uh, when it comes to uh, managing the cloud. So talking about DevOps life easy, we have uh, DevOps tooling. Uh, basically, um, these tools are uh, built on top of the uh, CEP, the complex event processor mechanism of monitoring the situational awareness in the cloud. So the CEP engine keep ca capturing the events that are published into this one and uh, the, the event bus. 
And then uh, you can build dashboards uh, to keep track of whatever the interesting information that you want uh, in terms of monitoring the cloud. So the advantage of Stratos, first and foremost, it is capable of scaling anything. So um, as I said, uh, you can bring in service nodes as legacy cartridges into the system. So you can uh, uh, now cloudify your, uh, cloud enable your legacy applications using this particular architecture. And your legacy applications could use uh, anything other than HTTP. So it is also capable of dealing with non-HTTP uh, traffic. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, elastical, uh, elastical scaling. Then, uh, now given the fact that uh, Stratos architecture is capable of handling multiple infrastructure as a service clouds, it also gives you the ability to cloud burst into multiple clouds. And the other aspect is that uh, it also has a concept of multi-zone, multi-data center support. For example, you can have load balancers um, uh, uh, dealing with a particular uh, data center or uh, 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 zone so that you can deal with that particular zone independent of the other zone. And the other important aspect of Stratos is the levels of multi-tenancy that it supports. So it, uh, it supports four levels of multi-tenancy, the in-container multi-tenancy, which means that given a container, uh, you can have multiple tenants within that container itself or the uh, container level multi-tenancy such as uh, OS layer, uh, virtual machine layer, physical machine layer is also supported. <clears throat> so this is the uh, cloud bursting aspect that I was uh, uh, talking about. As this diagram explains, uh, uh, you can have, uh, in here we have the service type of PHP, right? PHP cartridges deployed across two uh, infrastructure service clouds, and uh, 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 the load can be uh, pumped into, uh, bursted into something like EC2, for example, uh, if that is your public cloud, uh, when the load increases, and keep on serving your requests in there. And uh, so uh, uh, when you're bursting, uh, you have a load balancer each uh, to deal with uh, 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 the particular infrastructure service cloud that you are dealing with, and then um, that load balancer will deal with the nodes, service nodes that are within that particular infrastructure service cl uh, cloud. <coughs> and I, as I mentioned, uh, uh, when you are uh, talking about controlling infrastructure as a service um, uh, resources, the system is capable of uh, controlling uh, uh, IaaS clouds per cloud, per region, per zone. Um, and and uh, it, it, the uh, key advantage of that particular model is that it allows you to uh, deal with things such as availability, disaster recovery, because if one of your uh, I ask clouds go down, you still have the capability to recover uh, uh, be, because you can um, uh, serve the same service using a different cloud uh, that is out there. <clears throat> and uh, obviously that also helps with your service level uh, agreements as well because you can keep uh, uh, making sure that um, uh, the applications are running uh, and uh, uh, it's not never out of uh, out of service kind of scenario. <clears throat> and uh, it also gives you uh, better control in terms of uh, resource utilization, and also it allows you to uh, deal with the uh, geo-based deployments as well uh, because uh, of the regional aspect that it can deal with. The other aspect that I spoke about is uh, the, uh, the multi-tenancy model. As I said, uh, uh, you can have uh, four levels of uh, multi-tenancy in here. Uh, one is uh, in container. Within the container, you can have multiple tenants. That is basically a running instance can serve uh, multiple tenants. 
or you can have container level multi tenancy where by OS, a virtual machine, or an operating system, uh, uh, you can uh, deal with uh, tenants. And um, the, the advantage here is that given that your application is capable of um, dealing with in container multi tenancy, it gives you the maximum multi tenancy density. Um, the number of tenants that uh, 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 given uh, uh, application uh, can be can serve. <clears throat> Obviously, um, uh, the key advantage here is that uh, it can uh, give you uh, absolute control in terms of how your resources are being utilized, etc. <clears throat> So uh, finally, um, uh, Stratos is an Apache project. Um, it has a diverse community, and it is going to graduate uh, pretty soon from incubation state into a top-level project. Um, it's open source, Apache license. You can give it a try. And uh, also, obviously, you can be part of it as well. Uh, you can join the community in one way, uh, help as uh, users. Uh, by trying it out, uh, or you can com contribute to the code um, yourself if you're interested in participating in the platform as a service uh, project. Uh, and if you are not interested in uh, taking part as a code uh, contributor, you can still contribute at the uh, cartridge level because um, uh, we have a set of cartridges already. In a, uh, you can find them out in a cartridge store. But uh, we keep on adding new cartridges um, into the system so that the number of uh, services that, we, uh, that, are, that are available for people are high. And um, uh, because of the open source model, you can uh, contribute them under Apache license, et cetera. And uh, I have given the website here. Um, uh, you can have a visit, uh, look at documentation, uh, et cetera. And we have a lot of uh, uh, social presence as well. Uh, we have uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and a lot of uh, material in terms of uh, social um, contributions, uh, in terms of how to write cartridges, et cetera, et cetera, available. So you can have a look at them. And there are uh, Lakmal and Nirmal, who are participants of the uh, community, sitting there at the back. <laughs> Hands up, guys. You can talk to them for a demo, et cetera. Uh, they are committers of the project. Lakmal is the lead of the project, um, if you're interested in it. Right? That's all I have. I think I was too quick. <laughs> anyway, if you have questions, I'm happy. And if I cannot answer your detailed technical questions, we have the committers from the project. We can definitely help you. Thank you. Uh, so we have time for questions. Go ahead. I'll, I'll repeat the question. Can you give us an example of in-container multi-tenancy? Can you give us an example of in-container multi-tenancy? OK, so uh, basically, um, um, uh, an example is that, um, say, you have an application server. The application server is capable of hosting multiple tenants within a single instance of the application server. Basically, uh, in order to support the uh, in-container multi-tenancy, that particular service itself needs to be capable of dealing with tenants. So for example, um, uh, if I take a WSO2 example, WSO2 application server is multi-tenanted by implementation. So you can have multiple tenants running inside a, a, a single JVM. Right. Did I answer your question? More questions? Um, when you showed the load balancing, does that each cloud in your case could be a, a public cloud, for, for example? Um, how do you manage uh, if you like, can't have conformity with service that says the first thing is a public cloud? Okay. How, how do you manage DNS when you do the cloud bursting between multi clouds? Uh, 
Stratos maintain the topology, uh, all the topology member information inside the topology event. So uh, we can just, uh, it's, a, uh, you can, it's a topic, you can just uh, subscribe to that event and get the member information, like load balance information. You can update your uh, DNS. Uh, when a DNS is spin up in public cloud, it is reflected in the topology. You can just update a DNS simply uh, with that. Thank you. More? So yeah, if the infrastructure layer supports uh, um, multiple parameters, we can support that. If, if, uh, if it doesn't support, uh, uh, we cannot support that. So it depends on the uh, capabilities of the IaaS layer. Because we are dealing with the IaaS layer, if the IaaS layer is capable of that, we, then we can support that. Am I right? I have one question. Uh, so you're using JCloud to, to talk to all the different ES providers, ES solutions. Uh, do you have it uh, all worked out with CloudStack? Do we have it? Is it working with CloudStack? Yeah, we are currently working on getting it to work with CloudStack. Great, so definitely, I mean, if you need any help, either from JClouds or CloudStack, which are top level projects, uh, you know, we'll be happy to, uh, to help Great. get that done. Yeah, Great, thank you. Yeah, I know Tuna, yeah, <laughs> he's working with you.